So what we're going to do today is create a very simple web API and now write a test for this using what we call a web application factory. We need to actually start out with having some code test. So I'll create a new project here, and then I'll just create a web API. And this is just going to be a very basic sample. And by default, it has the weather forecast model here. And then there is one endpoint here to return some kind of hard-coded weather form. So if you start up this API, send an HTTP request, you get a JSON response from the API. So what I'll do now is I'll add a new project here and I'll just click unit test. And then I'll just pick X unit. You could also do this with the CLI by just writing .NET new X unit and then it will create this project. In order for us to actually get started testing the API, we need to add a reference. So now we have a reference going from the test project to the web application. And we need one more dependency in order to actually get started with the integration testing. And that is the dependency called Microsoft ASP.Core.MVC.Testing. And this one should just be added to the test project. Now we minimize this, and this is the starting point for writing our test. So a very basic uh, API test could be testing whether or not an endpoint produces a certain status code. So when you're doing API testing, you're not actually invoking the method that is returning some. You're sending a network request to the server, and then you're seeing what the server is responding with. So this is slightly different than making a unit test. So the class that we're writing the test in should extend something called Web Application Factory. Inside of the diamond brackets here, what you should be putting is the name of the class that is responsible for starting the API. So here you will write program and then make sure that the program actually refers to the web application program. And now what you can use is something called create client, which is something that exists within the web application factory class that you're extending. You write bar client equals create client. This here is an HTTP client that knows exactly how to communicate with your API that is being started using the program client. So if you write create client and then get async here, this here is the starting point of sending an HTTP request to some address. So we know that the yeah, web API that we're producing is capable of serving a weather forecast. Currently, this is using the minimal API setup, but this could also be a controller method that is just serving a, something on weather forecast route and then using the get HTTP method here. That's why inside of the test, we will use a get method here and then we will insert the relative path here. So if you want to, you could also make this uh, slightly more readable by just making this into two statements, bar response equals client and then calling this get async. So now we have it in two lines instead of one. Uh, you will notice that it says async here. So async means that calling this method here does not actually produce the intended return type. It produces a, a task that is a wrapper for what we actually care about, which is an HTTP response. So what we'll do now is instead of just writing client.get async, we'll now write await client but get async. But since we can only use the await keyword inside of an asynchronous method itself, we have to transform this method into an asynchronous task here. So before it said void, now it says async task. You can still actually have a void here if you really want to, uh, but the, the convention is to use task to make an asynchronous function. So at this point, we're actually ready to make an assertion. So I can assert that uh, there are two things that are equal, and that should be a response status code and some expected response status code. So I'll take the expected value first, HTTP status code dot OK, and then I'll take response dot status code. And then we can run the test. So running this test now, I will get that this is a success. So what it's doing is it's starting an in-memory a web API for us. So there's a server running, but the server is not actually serving on a port. 
is this something that the framework takes care of? And then it will start up this application here, which is an API, and it's serving this weather forecast. So what you might have the impression of is, this is just as useful as just starting the API and then just using some HTTP client call uh, the API and uh, assert that a status code is 200. And, and this is very much an equivalent test, just formulated in a way that doesn't require you to actually manually start the API. But there are some benefits to actually producing this with your own C-sharp code. However, the big difference between just using a .http file and then just expressing some kind of assertion here is that this test has no way of actually interacting with your code. And uh, this test here is 100% black box. It sends a request and it makes assertions about the response. But let's say you have a test that is testing an endpoint that is doing an update. How would you assert that an update works? Well, you have to have something inside of the database to actually update. So insert thing into DB and then you would call the update method here. So during the act phase, you actually trigger the endpoint that updates something. And then down here, you could both assert on the response, which is what we're doing here, but you could also assert on DB state. So you could still go to the database and then you can still assert that something has been updated successfully. Something that's also really powerful is that you can still make assertions based on the types that exist within your production code using this approach. So let's say that you want to take out some weather forecasts from AI, and then you want to look at the HTTP response body and actually make some assertions. That's still totally possible. So I just hard-coded this value here to 42. And now let's go into the tests here. And I'll just delete some of the comments. Um, and then I'll make an assertion down here based on the HTTP body. So up here where I had the response, I would write bar body equals uh, awaits response content read a string async. So here you just have a string that is just representing the response body. And now we can just transform this one into an actual uh, weather forecast object. So unlike traditional black box testing, where extracting things as a model means you have to make a new model inside of the test and then deserialize into that. We already have our weather forecast model, so we have visibility over all of the production code here. So you can write uh, this weather forecast, weather forecasts response equals JSON serializer, deserialize to a list of weather forecast, and then put the body in here. Since it's possibly null, it's going to create a yellow line. And uh, now here, this variable will contain a response that we're actually interested in making assertions about. Uh, I think I'll just uh, quickly make some options here. So uh, when you actually make a response, it's going to try and uh, serialize it into a camel case. So I'll just make this case insensitive. And uh, here you can take a weather forecast response first uh, temperature C. And let's make a, a variable for this one. Bar temp this assert equals temp and 42 are equal. So let's run this one. And uh, we can see that the test is passing. This approach, you still have the uh, flexibility of a normal black box test, just like the .http files here. Uh, but you have a little more power since you can still make a range faces that will put data into your database. And you can still use uh, super nice C-sharp objects when you actually make your HTTP assertion uh, just like this. So this was just a very short demo on how to use the web application factory to create an integration test for an API using .NET.